Hello, hello. Yay, we're on for today. Great. It's good to see that we're working. Let's make sure. Yes. Good. <laughs> Hallelujah, right? Uh, things are actually going to work. So awesome. Okay. Let me know if it's not working at any time in the comments because I don't want you to be staring at a black screen <laughs> and can't hear anything and nothing going on. Um, so let me know what's going on in the comments. Make sure that I know you can hear me okay and um, what's happening for you today. I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on in my world and uh, share what's going on in your world in the in the comments. Um, just to make sure that everything is working correctly. So what happened was I had contacted uh, BeLive about the problems that we had with the broadcast, and they basically apologized and said that it was uh, a bunch of people doing the same thing at the same time. It was an overload. So it was it was heavily overloaded. There was too much um, broad people trying to broadcast right at the same time and what happened was is it never did hit Facebook. So here I was thinking that everything was going fine and looking in the comments realized that nothing was actually going from uh, Be Live straight over to Facebook because there was too many interruptions. It was a heavy overload. I guess once in a while they do experience this where it's just too overloaded, too many people trying to use their software at once and they weren't able to keep up on it. So they apologize for it and they they feel like they are putting some things in place in order to fix it. So I hope so. Otherwise, I'll have to change and use something different. Um, so we'll see. Sometimes you got to go through a lot of different pieces of software and things before you find something that's going to work consistently for you and not have these interruptions. Hey, Scott. Great. Uh, welcome. Glad that you're able to hear everything and see everything. It's not a black screen anymore, like a big black hole that you're staring into, wondering what happened and where did she go and <laughs> what's going on, right? It was an issue with BeLive is what happened there. So hopefully they will get it under control and we won't have this again. So what else is going on in my world? Drop down in the comments what's going on in your world. Uh, it's been very, very busy. There's been spring break happening around here this week. But uh, for me, life has carried on as, as normal. Um, and uh, let's see, what did I do this week? Webinar. I did some webinar training in a, um, a person's group inside of their course that they have. Uh, it's someone that did some training with me about two years ago with my uh, Shopify store. And here it is a couple years later. And I was asked to do a webinar talking about um, Pinterest marketing for those who own Shop Shopify stores and how to drive traffic in. So that was a lot of fun. And we ended up that we're having to do another webinar, make it a two part series because there's just a lot of information to cover. Um, and then that will be featured inside of their course that they have, which is quite good. Um, a lot of stuff that I that I put into practice principles that I did uh, two years ago to help make my um, store convert better in Shopify. And a lot of the suggestions were great, worked out great. And then my next step was drive the traffic in. And at that point, I chose Pinterest as my avenue of doing it, which is a little bit different from the from many of the typical Shopify owners. They usually do Facebook ads. So I went, I did, I did some Facebook ads, yes. Um, but I was also wanting to experiment with Pinterest because I was reading a lot more details of statistics and realizing that actually more people are buying from Pinterest and you get more referrals and traffic from Pinterest than you do any other social media site. So I thought, well, why not just make my main focus if I want to focus on one thing um, to drive traffic why not just really dive into Pinterest heavily, learn everything I can, study it, experiment, try, and that's what I did for the last two years. So it's kind of come full circle, and I did a webinar um, teaching and training, so it uh, took a little bit of time to prepare 
things for that. Did that this week. We'll have another um, second part to that series. At some point, it'll get scheduled. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, I think I mentioned that I um, also recorded a podcast uh, with, um, I think it was e-commerce momentum. I think I talked about that earlier. So that should be coming out within the next week. Um, what else is going on? Oh my goodness. Taxes. Is anybody preparing their taxes? Yes. <laughs> and getting your stuff organized for, for your taxes. Yes, that's, that's happening. Um, what else has been happening this week? Oh, I, I interviewed about 15 different VAs and hired two of them so that they can execute a strategy plan that I have in place for, uh, driving traffic to my Shopify store, but doing it using some of the Merch by Amazon products, Sunfrog products, Redbubble products, and so on. So I have kind of a strategy in place and I want to test it and see what happens. I, I find it to be interesting um, to see what's going to go on there. It's also using some affiliate links as well. So I'll be able to develop that stream of income out a little bit further if this technique works. If it seems to be working well, then I will um, start sharing a little bit more about that and let you know how it goes. What else has been going on that I'm trying to think of this past week? A lot of stuff, just a lot of stuff working on. Um, cool. All right. This is awesome. Scott says he just started getting more active with Pinterest and adding boards. Awesome. Now I have to learn more about the optimization portion, the SEO side of it. Yep. That's your number one thing is the SEO. The search engine optimization is what's what it's all about on Pinterest. Once you get that down and can master it really well and you add that into your routine of creating some awesome looking pins that people do truly want to click on that pin to travel over to wherever you want them to go, whatever website link you have, then that is your basic formula of driving traffic. So you, that here's the thing is that you can blast out a lot of awesome looking pins but it's going to be a problem if nobody can find them. And the only way that people can find your pins and your stuff um, on your pins is if you have some good SEO techniques in place. If you understand the search engine of Pinterest and you understand the influence of keywords and how powerful those keywords are in the Pinterest search engine. Um, so that's a little bit about that. You're on the right track. Get your SEO going, get your pins going, and you should be off and running. So what I wanted to talk about was some pin influ influencers and how you can study um, pin influencers. And one of them is uh, this one called Ann, Unique Gifters and Gift Ideas. I thought it was very fascinating to um, take a look at her profile. I don't know who she is, but she has a blog. And her main way of monetizing her blog is through gift ideas. Literally, it's a blog about nothing more than gift ideas. And you can see all of her boards are a variety of different types and kinds of gift ideas. Um, how does she monetize this? Through affiliate links that goes out to all of these gift ideas. So she, she takes a collection of items, puts them together, has affiliate links to each one, and it's a, it's a creative collection that's put together. And then she creates these awesome looking pins for it. So it's very clever. And uh, this one is a great reminder that about this time of year is when people start planning their gifts for teachers. So if you have some stuff that is really great to give to teachers, you need to have a board that is about um, gifts for teachers or teacher gifts. You can create a whole board about that if you have enough stuff to fill up a board and be able to do it on a regular basis. This is the, the time when we start seeing a lot of activity and the high point will happen around May. So you really need to get a board going and get get it pinning to it on a daily basis because it will reach the peak right in May and uh, the beginning of June. After that, it starts to go down. But you could treat that as though it's a seasonal board. 
because that is when people are most actively looking for ideas on what to get teachers because it's the end of the school year. So this is huge. Graduation is another board that does very well with graduation gifts. So I would encourage you to create a board. If you don't have enough stuff to fill a board for either one of those, then what you do is you create a more general board like what she did that says unique gift ideas. And I bet that this has been keyworded up really well. So if you were to type in gift, you would probably see the word unique and ideas right in the um, in your keywords. That's why she keyworded her title the way it is. And then what she does is she puts in a variety of different types of gifts in here. So if you don't have enough teacher gifts, that's okay. You can create a section. So let's click on this further. Do you see how she used the sections within the board? And when you are there, you'll see a, a button here that says add a section um, inside of your own account. We're not going to see it here because, you know, I, this is her, her account. So I, I'm not in behind the scenes of her account. So we're not going to see it. But in your own account, you will see add a section. So you add a section and you can see where she's taking and using this. And here's the thing is at this point, we're being told that the keywords that you use here for these sections are not being picked up in the search engine by Pinterest. That's what we're being told at this point. However, I would still do it anyways, because down the road that could change and you would be set up and ready to go for it. The second reason is because you could now take this stocking stuffers, a keyworded section and put stocking stuffers up here in your board description. So if you did that, which she needs to add it up here, it would help the entire board to rank higher for different types and kinds of gifts. All right, so I would take the Valentine's Day and I would wanna add it up here. You can see she does have Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, um, but she needs to probably update um, her board, give it an update to include more keywords because since she probably initially or first created this board description, I'm sure there's a lot of things that have changed and she's, you know, at the, at that time, she may not have known like what, what gift guides am I going to create or what, what blog post or what am I going to do? And, you know, and, and then started just creating and doing these pins and now she can start making some updates here. So that the whole board can rank a little bit higher. Okay, now you can get an idea of what that's like where she's starting to organize it and then the rest of this is probably more recent and this just hasn't been organized quite yet. But you get an idea of what these pins look like and what a nice job it is that she's um, doing here to create these pins. It's, it's quite remarkable. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by what she's doing. So I would consider her a pin influencer because um, not just because she does have a lot of followers, but for other reasons that are a little bit deeper. Look at the amazing pins that she's creating and the great ideas. She understands keywording well, is starting, is really you using that well. So this would be someone that I would be interested in following. And if you don't wanna follow um, all of her boards, you can actually just go in and pick and choose what boards to follow. That way, if I wanted to save or repin any of this stuff into my own boards, it's more likely that her pins are doing well. People are engaging with them, there's a lot of activity, uh, they may be going viral more often. So that's the kind of stuff that I would want to pin and save into my boards. Therefore, I would consider her a pin influencer and I would want to only follow pin influencers and only repin or save the pins of pin influencers because it's going to give you the biggest amount of traction that you could possibly get inside of your own account. So it's gonna help you by doing that. 
So really creative, lots of creativity here. If you have a hard time trying to think of what to do for putting collections together somehow and maybe even ideas for boards that you want to create, you could just come here and look at her ideas. You know, like great gift ideas for a first time backpacker. Very creative. Here's um, a, for a librarian, a deployment farewell. I mean, who's doing this? No one. No one is thinking of things like that. So it really truly is unique. And she is living up to her board title, right? It is very unique, which is very cool. Fox lovers, polar bear lovers, whale lovers. I mean, now if you uh, were doing um, print on demand stuff, you could do the same thing and you could have shirts about foxes. Um, you could call them gift ideas for fox lovers. What I would prefer that she would have done is instead of having a picture of a fox, such as just a stock photo, that she would actually have a, a picture of two or three products that she's featuring in her, her uh, website blog post instead of just having a stock photo of a fox. I would rather see the products. So um, I would know a little bit more about it and I would be more likely to click through that pin. I also would like to see a number. So if this is gift ideas for fox lovers, like how many gift ideas are there? If it says that there's 23 gift ideas for fox lovers, I'm more likely to click through because I feel like I've hit the jackpot. Like I've got 23 ideas to pick from. It's not gonna take me long to find something that I wanna buy and for a gift for a friend of mine who's really into foxes, okay? And you're gonna look really cool because you're the only person in the world who ever thought of giving such, you know, a gift that was incredibly thoughtful, all right? And that's what people appreciate. So I would love to see pictures of some products on the pin and a number of how many gifts are there that does help increase the click-through rate. But otherwise, the colors are vibrant. She's picking orange and pink and red and it pops out and gets your eye. This green is pretty cool. That's great for spring colors. I've been doing a lot of green lately for spring colors. Um, kind of like that lighter green to get it to pop out. This teal is becoming more and more popular. I see it a lot more often. Um, a little bit of yellow that pops out is great, gets your attention. But anyways, you get an idea here of what is going on and what a great idea overall. So she's built a whole business around just gift ideas. Tons and tons and tons of it. The revenue that she's bringing in is, my guess is pretty, pretty good because she's built this out extensively. And look at all the boards that she's been able to expand out just from doing nothing but blogging. Okay, now imagine if you did the same thing, but you actually have products that you're selling. It's not just affiliate marketing or affiliate sales, which is a, can be a very good stream of income, but you pair that along with your products where you actually use affiliate links to your actual products. Now you have double uh, streams of income happening for the same amount of work and effort. It's a two for one, it's, it's a double dipping. So if you're gonna put great time and energy into it, why not, you know, why not make it the most effective and powerful that you can? Okay, so you see that she's got a lot of followers. She is following quite a few people. I would like to see a bigger difference in, the, in these numbers. So she may be following a lot of people that, um, you know, are, most people that you follow are not gonna follow you back. So it's a myth to think that the way for you to get followers is to go out and follow people. Not necessarily. I mean, you might get some people following you, but they're gonna be poor quality. They're not people who are gonna interact with your pins or engage. They're just following back for the sake of following back. They think it's Twitter. Um, I would rather have people that are following me who are active on Pinterest where I, when I put out a pin, I would really love for them to repin it or to save it. I mean, those are the kinds of people that I would want to attract to 
uh, my Pinterest profile. And the only way to do that is to start only being very picky about who you follow. Don't just follow everybody, but follow people who are in your niche area, who are doing an awesome job with their own Pinterest accounts. And hopefully you can be able to tell that they are a pin influencer to make it well worth the time and effort. Okay. Now, some other things to look here that is done very, very well is this clickable link. This is when you verify your domain. Lots of, uh, there's a couple keywords here that she's put in and she's also has a call to action saying, go here to register to get this free printable uh, wedding registry checklist. So a lot of people really do take this and copy it and paste it so that they can sign up. So it's a great way for her to start building her email list and that I do uh, recommend because I do think that people take action on that. So you can get an idea of what's going on here. Now what I want to do is I want to show you her actual website. Um, so I'm going to share a different screen here for you. And hopefully it will go okay and we won't crash everything. We'll see what happens here. Okay, it's saying that it's sharing but it's not popping up for me quite yet. Let me fix that. There we go. Now we got it. Okay, so this is her actual website, which is quite interesting um, to take a peek at. So her website is Unique Gifter, and I was I, I was trying to decide if this is a true blog or is it a word, um, a Shopify store because how it how this whole thing this theme acts it feels more like a Shopify store this this is a a type of theme that's common but I doubt that she would be using um, a Shopify store for mainly blogging that's not you know the the blog part of Shopify is not real great but it does you know give a feel like that. Um, so I'm not exactly sure, but probably she's using WordPress. Um, could be Wix, uh, I don't know exactly. But this is quite interesting that she has this giant box right at the front of her front page of her website that is all about you know collecting emails. So when you click over here to go, that's the first thing that you see. And then you can see the latest ideas from the blog. Now, this is what is a great idea, is on her website, she took those same pins that we saw, and this is how she's displaying them as categories or things to read about on her blog. I think that was quite good. So now people can actually save these pins right here for later on Pinterest without even clicking through to read the article, because maybe they just don't have time. So like, yeah, I want this one, I wanna read that one. Um, maybe I want to read this one and they just pick and choose some different ones that they would like to read for later of things that are the latest from the blog and they might come here periodically. Great ideas for these pins. You can see, um, how they're well done. Um, no logo. She doesn't have a logo on her pin. She's using the domain name instead, which is okay. But if she was concerned about branding, I would want to include a logo for the branding. And she's got a logo up here. So I would want to put that on the pin because the, the branding is very visual and people connect the visual more than they do words. So you could write your domain name, uniquegifter.com if you don't have a logo. But if you do have a logo, I would probably want to use a logo instead or use both at the same time so that people do associate the domain name with a logo. Um, there's just something about images. The, the powerful image of a logo will help people uh, get to know your brand faster than if you were to type in your domain name. 
And then you can see tons of these all categorized out. I mean, it's just nothing but this. Talk about a, a, an interesting model, an interesting model for running a business online and taking that and using Pinterest as your main traffic source. Um, knowing that people on Pinterest are looking for gift ideas. They're looking for things that they would like to buy and they plan ahead. So she's done a great job here. If you're having a hard time trying to think of boards to create, look at this. She knows something, so you need to learn here. Graduation gifts, wedding gifts, um, engagement gifts, baby shower gifts. I mean, she's even though it's all about gifts, it's, it could be endless for her because she's specializing in lots of different types and kinds. So let's look a little bit closer here at one of these articles, and you're going to see how the monetization is happening. Okay, um, again, the very first thing that you see is the pin itself. So this is a full size pin on Pinterest. This will be pinned out or saved onto Pinterest for those who want to read the article later, or maybe they found some awesome products. Uh, they're not ready to buy them quite yet, but they're gonna save it into one of their Pinterest boards as an idea to remember when the time comes and they're ready to buy those gifts, okay? So some writing here, you're gonna see right away at the top, gift ideas from Kelsey. This post may contain affiliate links. Now let's see what her name is. Remember that her name is Anne. So she has someone else that wrote this article. She did not write this herself. So there's another idea for you is if you feel like you don't have time to do a blog, which actually I would highly recommend it, especially if you're selling products for your branding. And it's a great way to build that relationship uh, to warm up uh, the person coming from Pinterest to your site to warm them up to then eventually become a shopper and a buyer and to get to know your brand. It's very difficult to take cold traffic and send that cold traffic straight to your products directly. It can work many times it will convert, but until they get to know your brand, it's not going to convert as easily. And one way for them to get to know your brand is through your, through a blog. Um, Shopify has a blog side. You could use anything as a blog and you could link to your products and even affiliate links to your products right in the blog side. This is called content marketing. It's been around for years. It's one of the most effective ways of marketing and, and actually growing a full brand. Um, the benefits of, of growing a brand is that you have a lot of loyal shoppers because people are very brand loyal. And you don't have to worry as much about where am I going to find people to buy my stuff. They are more than happy because they know more about who you are and you've developed more trust. Now, here is their other disclosure right here. This is a disclosure of their affiliate links. And it's happening again for a second time right at the beginning, which according to the FTC, that's what needs to happen is they, you need to put your affiliate disclosure right before any of your affiliate links that you use. So they've gone above and beyond with this disclosure link. Most people don't write that much. Um, and it's in there twice. So they are fully covered with no problems. This is probably someone she's hired. So it could be a VA that writes this blog post for you and puts everything together. So she took pictures and put them on the blog of each item and then wrote uh, a few sentences here about each one. Now, you don't have to write a novel about everything that is on your list here, but it is a good idea to at least write a couple sentences to talk about it. If you're able to write more about it on a personal level, for example, you actually have used the product before, then you could share more about that, about how you use it, why you use it, what's great about it, what you love about it. And the more um, that you personalize it, the more likely they are to click here 
and go to the buy now. So they've got different types of things. These are all music related, so it really intrigued me. And um, see, and here is a shirt for those who are doing print on demand. So if you were to see an, a pin influencer like this and you go to their website, you start studying what they're doing, you might think, hey, I have some products that might fit into one of their gift idea um, blog posts. And you could contact them and say, well, you know, take a look at some of my pins and some of my stuff. I think you you would have, you know, it might be something that you would like to include over onto your website. And what will happen is then she will add it in and create an affiliate link so that she can start driving traffic then to your product on her website. And she's getting um, paid for her time of her effort driving that traffic by the affiliate sales of selling your product. So that's how you can be partnering with people that you find as pin influencers on Pinterest. So you don't want to ignore um, these people and ignore the stuff. So that would be reason number what, five or six for why you should be paying attention to the pin influencers and try to seek them out, not just to follow and to share, save their pins that can help you, but then take another step further with building your relationship with these pin influencers on Pinterest and say, hey, I've got some products and you have an amazing blog that you're driving traffic to. Would you mind, you know, would you like to share some of my products on your blog? You could use your affiliate links. It'll be awesome. Like, here's my best sellers and tell them, you know, here's my best selling products. I think they will do amazing for you on your blog. And when they, when they do that, you are helping them and they are helping you. That's the kind of relationships that you need to be building. And this is in every area of business. Um, we're doing this. So, okay. Yeah. Here's a comment from Sarah. Um, looks like she does the affiliate thing. Yep. If you shop at Amazon, I would be very grateful if you shop via my portal disclaimer, I do get a small cut. Yep. That is her main model of being able to, um, monetize all of the work and effort. And she is not necessarily writing all of these articles herself. She's hiring them done. There's different people who are, are doing them for her which I think is smart because you only have so much time in a day. So you can see just the basic formula and writing a, a title of what it is, a picture of what it is, and then writes a couple sentences. Um, whoever did this shirt, well done, by the way. That's funny. I love it. So let's see where it's going. Where do you think it's, it's, it's coming from? Do you think it's Amazon? Where do you think that this is going to go? Do you think it's Amazon? Do you think it's Redbubble? Do you think it's Sunfrog? See if anyone has any guesses of where you think that this is going to go to. I don't see any guesses. Okay, so let me show you. Here's where it's going. Probably not where you expected. It's going to Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> Etsy has a great affiliate program. It's there. They can be picky though. So you really have to do a nice job, but the, I think that their percentage that they give you in the commission is quite good. It's very good, way better than Amazon. Um, well, okay. So most, most all other affiliate programs are better than Amazon as far as how much of the cut you receive as commission. Just in general, probably Amazon is the lowest, but they're also the biggest uh, place that people buy from more often. So in the long run, you might end up making more money, who knows, because there's just simply more shoppers that go to Amazon than Etsy. But for people who are truly uh, wanting unique stuff, those are the people that hang out on Etsy. And they're willing to pay a little bit more money for it. So whoever did this shirt with uh, print on demand and connected it in here to your 
Etsy store. Nice job. Really good here. Um, don't know if I want to show who it is, but you can see all of them here that they have. And um, this person is uh, not the Anne, as you can see. This is a different person. And we don't have to say who that is if you know who it is. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't think you're able to see my screen. Sorry. Let me let me show you. Let me show you. I have to share like all of these. Oh, that's cool. Like a split screen. Can we do that? That's kind of cool. All right. Um, let's do this because I want you to see it bigger up close of what's going on here. So this was Etsy. Sorry. I forgot that I've got to re I've got to like do all of this juggling behind the scenes to share the screen and I get carried away and realize, oh, you can't see it. Um, this is it. It's, it went over to Etsy. So this is a print on demand store. Uh, it's probably print on demand most likely. And it's being connected to Etsy, probably with Printful. I'm not sure what they're using. Who knows? I don't, I shouldn't say, uh, but they are doing the connection with some kind of a print on demand with most likely with, um, with Etsy. And they did some description here, some writing. They've got a bunch of others that are similar to that. And um, they've had great experiences, lots of uh, good feedback and comments with their Etsy store. So they're doing an amazing job with this. And you can see that the owner of this is not Anne. So imagine if this was actually her product that she was selling on Etsy and she uses her Etsy affiliate link to go to her product, her own thing. I mean, not only would she get the sale of the shirt itself, but she would get some affiliate income too on top of that. So she's still doing just fine because she can make a lot of money with um, promoting other people's things. And that alone, if you do it well and do it right and drive the traffic in, can be a, a really awesome source of income, just that alone. So regardless, you know, um, she's doing great, but what I'm telling you is most of you um, are people who do really have products, you're in e-commerce, and it would be wise for you to drive traffic to your products, but maybe you could do it in a way where you can use affiliate links on top of that to your own products. If you get really good at driving traffic, then you could also promote other people's products too and work together. And maybe those people would start contacting you. Hey, can you feature some of my products in, in one of your blog posts? Because I see how amazing they're doing. Or you could ask them to do the same for you. You could swap out. That would be cool. So these are just some of the things and ideas of what you can do with uh, pin influencers. Okay. And remember that you can see all of these up here now that we have um, her, her Pinterest account that's doing quite well. We've got that traffic going straight over to her website, which is, uh, basically blog posts of products with affiliate links. Um, not that much writing going on. So you don't need to feel like you're an amazing author of any kind or have to be terrific at writing. In fact, we discovered that most of the writing being done on the blog is by other people. Uh, ghost writers, um, probably VAs. And those VAs are just doing it for her while she works on other stuff, okay? And then we see that her main source for all of these, in fact, I've already checked all of those affiliate links, they're all going to Etsy. So she's making very good money with finding items on Etsy. She could do the same thing with Amazon and get um, some income coming in from Amazon. She could do the same thing with 
any of the print on demand sites, Redbubble has an affiliate program. Sunfrog has an amazing affiliate program of 40% commissions. Amazing program. So there's a lot that she can do to really make a very nice, um, sizable income for herself. And some of this she's doing herself and some of it she's hired out. So just think about that of these are multiple ways and things that you can be leveraging Pinterest and building a very viable business with multiple streams of income. Quite, quite smart, very clever, very good. How do you find more pin influencers? Okay, let's um, take a closer look and get rid of some of these. You can look at the trending section. I think we talked about this before. You go under explore, explore different topics. These are trending, they are popular, they are things that are more likely going viral. You can go under here and see more sections as well. So if I um, wanna look at any one thing, maybe I wanna do holiday and party. Probably um, these sections, um, some of it are for the boards, but not all of it exactly. What I'm thinking of, of where they're coming up with this. I would, I would be interested in the geek. That would be kind of cool to see if there's some other people that are doing really well. And you look at these pins to see what's been well done. Like this one is well done the St. Patrick's Day pin. It's it's very popular. That's why it's sitting right up on top underneath holidays and events for the, the trending. And it's just right here. I barely have to scroll down. So this is one that I would definitely want to pin into my board about St. Patrick's Day because it's going viral, um, quite popular. And then I would wanna take another step and say, okay, who is this person? Um, tpgirl.com. Okay. Now this person who pinned it may not be, um, her, but it does look like it because it says, get it today at tpgirl.com. Wow. So she's using her own name. Possibly. instead of using TP Girl. If she's got a website branding going on for that, that's what she really needs to be building her, her business account for. So let's find out. Um, what I'm gonna do is go TP Girl, and you go here to people. Here is this person. This is who it really was. That other one was just basically doing a repin or a save from the original pin that came from here. And did you notice that she did not change anything in the pin description? She left it completely alone and didn't change a thing. She just saved it and that was it. That's what most people do. So it's very important that you do take the time to craft your pins well with good keywords in them because most people do leave them alone. And when they start sharing your pins, it's gonna give it a further reach. That's how you get them to go viral. So she's got, she's about printables, recipes, and good ideas. Let's see if she's a pin influencer. Yes, she's got 7,000 followers, only following 129 people. That's awesome. She is really getting some valid followers naturally. It's not because she's trying to go out and follow everybody in the world, which gives you a lot of junk followers, people who don't, who are never going to take action. Her followers are people who are really, taking action on her pins. They're sharing stuff. That's why her pin went viral. So it is important on who you follow and it's important on who follows you. And you can see how you can leverage that. So this would be someone that I would want to follow because she's doing some awesome things. Let's take a look at some pins to see if she's got pins that look good. Yeah. Look at all the pins that she's saving in her boards. These pins are awesome looking pins. So that's what I do too, is I only save the best of the best. That's what it's about on Pinterest, is you're curating 
the best of the best in your boards. And when you take the time to do that, a lot of people start following your boards and they start following you. So she's got some really great pins in her boards. Some of them are hers and some of them are other people's pins. But like this one is not her pin. It's coming from DIY Projects for Teens. But I would want to pin that one too because look at how amazing it looks. It's, it's more likely to go viral. So that's where she's getting a lot of traction in her boards is not just her own pins, but she's saving the awesome pins of other pin influencers in her board. Therefore, her total followers keep increasing all the time. And she doesn't have to go out and worry about following people to get the followers. She's attracting them just naturally to her. If that makes any sense to you at all, just trying to help you think this through and get a better understanding of, of how Pinterest works and how to fully, how to fully use this to make it work for you in, in your business. So well done. Well done here with this one. Um, that's how you do it. Remember that we went to trending and we just, you know, anywhere in here. Let's find another pin influencer. Let's go to geek. This is always fascinating to see what you're going to come up with. Ooh, someone's got an awesome looking um, pin with t-shirts on it. This is kind of hard to find. Our pins that are well done with shirts. But this one is going viral. Notice that it's also a promoted pin, which is helping them rank up high as well. But it's gone viral, even with it being promoted. Very cool. Snorg Tees is who this person is. They pinned it themselves, which means I can click through and be able to get right to them. Yes. Awesome. They are a pin influencer 9,000 followers are only following 52 people because it doesn't matter that you have a high number of people that you're following they're not going to follow you back a good 90% of them don't care they're not going to follow you back nice 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 I love this they've got all kinds of shirts so if you need ideas if you are a merch person, which the majority of the people that are in um, the course for Pinterest that I have, a good, good number of them are people who are doing print on demand. This is what they're doing to take their business to the next level. Um, I have a good number of you who also have Shopify stores that are coming in and getting some help and some learning and training. And that's been awesome too. Many of you with the Shopify stores do the print on demand in connection with your Shopify stores. So that's awesome. Um, some of you have other products as well. Doesn't matter. But if you are someone in the print on demand stuff and you're mostly doing t-shirts, you can get ideas on what uh, ways that you can create some boards, some boards that are niched down for you. Okay, so they've got Funny Patriotic in one collection. 7,500 followers to this board. Um, their pins are not the greatest, though. These are not great pins, unfortunately. Uh, so they need a little bit of learning. They're doing pretty well as it is, but they could do even better. Even better if they made the long pins like the one that we saw that is going viral. It's going viral for a reason. They did it really, really well. This one would be great for Father's Day, funny shorts for men. And they could have a Father's Day board to, for that a holiday and then pin all of this stuff out into their Father's Day board as well. Okay, this one's getting closer and doing better, but it's, you know, it's okay but it's still not quite there. All right. Well, I was hoping for some more pin examples. So 
I don't, I wouldn't follow them then because I wouldn't pin any of their stuff. Their, their pins are not um, the type of pins that I would want to put in my boards. They're not really going to help me um, get more people following my boards. Uh, this is great pin. They didn't create it, but it's an awesome pin right here of this bacon dip. Two recipes in one. 30 bacon recipes. So they were smart. They put their recipes in the board that is all about bacon with their bacon shirts. And they've got quotes in there too. That's exactly what I do. It does awesome. But they just need better looking quote pins. Um, this one they made and it's just the square image. It wouldn't take much effort to make that a long pin and help it to do better. It would do far, far better. So they're getting on the right track here. I can see that they've got some things that they're doing well, but they've got a long ways uh, to go yet uh, to help them really, really uh, gain some more traction. So that is Snorg Tees, another type of up and coming pin influencer. I wouldn't pin their stuff quite yet until I only pin like their awesome and amazing stuff and that's it, which isn't much at this point, but um, looks like they might be trying to turn that tide a little bit. Okay, let's see if we got any questions down here or comments. Um, if not, we'll wrap it up for today, but that's how you can find some pin influencers and why you want to find pin influencers, what you can do uh, to build a relationship with them. And all of that will ho help your business overall, and hopefully it will help their business too. Okay, have a great weekend and a good rest of your day.